<laughs> Greetings, Portland. Today is uh, Wednesday, the 20th of October, 2021. And uh, I want to wish those of you who celebrate Halloween, Happy Halloween. Last time I was here, I had a sign saying Happy Halloween 2021. I don't have it with me today. However, for those of you who celebrate the resurrection of the dead or whatever the, the whole holiday is all about, Happy Halloween. Most Christians, I don't think... Uh, celebrate Halloween. I think it's, it's usually All Saints Day, which is the day after, the first of November. But I wanted to read you a passage of the Bible. I wasn't sure how to start this message. Um, but I opened up to the book of Esther, and I'd like to read Esther chapter 7, verses 1 to 6. It says, Now the king and Haman came to drink wine with Esther the queen. And the king said to Esther on the second day, also, as they drank their wine at the banquet, What is your petition, Queen Esther? It shall be granted you. And what is your request? Even to half of the kingdom, it shall be done. Then Queen Esther replied, If I have found favor in your sight, O king, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given me as my petition and my people as my request. For we have been sold and I and my people to be destroyed, to be killed and to be annihilated. Now, if we had only been sold as slaves, men and women, I would have remained silent for the trouble would not be commensurate with the annoyance to the king. Then King Hahasu Harris asked Queen Esther, Who is he and where is he who would presume to do thus? And verse 6 says, A foe and an enemy is this wicked Haman. Then Haman became terrified before the king and queen. Esther was the queen replacing Vashti in 127 provinces under King Ahasuerus. But there was a small problem, and the small problem was Haman. Before I continue, I want to turn to the Lord in a word of prayer just to make sure that this message is blessed by Him and all of you who are hearing it would also be blessed. Father, I pray at this hour for your blessing. I ask that you would minister to the people as the word is preached. I pray that those who are not saved would make the decision to be saved, and those who are saved would continue to be sanctified in your word and in your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. It says here, a foe and an enemy is this wicked Haman. Haman was sort of like the right-hand man of King Ahasuerus. But there's a problem. Mordecai would not bow down to Haman because he was a Hebrew. Mordecai worshipped God and served God. But when it came to dealing with Haman, he treated him like any other dignitary. But he didn't bow down to him as if he was something or someone more special. A foe and an enemy is this wicked Haman. This morning I woke up, my tent was parked on 2nd and Main, or 2nd and uh, Yamhill. And when I woke up, I knew that somebody had been into the tent. I was assaulted. I was left directed. I had property missing. I had a bag of clips and the clips were missing. I usually use the clips to keep the tent down because of the wind that blows at night. 
I was pierced in several places, which is usually what happens every morning when I wake up. It's either the piercing is the ankle, the heel, the foot, the nose, the tongue, somewhere in my body, and my body is left erected. Why is this happening? I'm not sure. Why am I being sexually assaulted and physically assaulted in the tent? I don't know. But this passage ministers to me. It says a foe and an enemy is this wicked Haman. Then Haman became terrified before the king and queen. Esther called this man a foe and an enemy. Why? Is this what I'm dealing with here? A foe and an enemy. A person who won't stop stalking me day and night. One, because they don't like my race. Two, because they don't want me to be an equal. Three, because they want me to bow down to them. Just like Haman wanted Mordecai to bow down to him. How painful is it to have somebody take a needle, such as this one, and stick it in your foot? How painful is it to have somebody take a needle and shove it in your nose or on your tongue while you're sleeping or on the side of your tongue because you're missing a tooth? Somebody taking your nail and where the taking your foot and where the Achilles heel is, that, that part there, and just sticking that needle right there. Very painful to have somebody do this every single day, every single night. For what purpose or for what reason is this person violently doing this? Now, for some people they would laugh because it's not that big of a deal. Any volunteers here who wants to demonstrate that it, it's not painful at all? Any of the women who may do this to sons and daughters? Any of the men? Anybody who want to volunteer to take this? It's not that big of a deal to have somebody shove this in your heel, your thighs, your tongue, your gums, your teeth. It's such a small object, but it's very painful. Even when you go to the doctor to take a shot, you really don't want to endure it. So this morning I was grieved. I was angry. Because I woke up at 7.30 this morning, later than I normally do. I usually wake up at six to pack up everything. But for whatever reason, I fell asleep last night and didn't wake up until 7.30. But something else happened last night. Somebody kept on coming to the tent and hitting the top of the tent every time I fell asleep. And I'd get up and I'd walk around and they're gone. I did that once. The second time it was a Native American woman. And I said to her, what are you doing? Why are you hitting my tent? The first time, the Lord says it was a Mexican who later drove by in a vehicle, black vehicle, and looked at me like this while he was zigzagging in the streets. I tried to flag down some police officers in a vehicle and uh, bike uh, in, in some bikes, but they didn't slow down. Finally, one drove by, and I told them that there are people hitting the tents. They didn't take a police report; they just kept on going. He said to me, "I'll check it out," but he never came back to get my name or to write a police report. One of the most discouraging things that I find about the police is that when you have incidents and you call them at non-emergency or 911, 
it doesn't matter how many reports they write, right? Those are the people that you're supposed to call. Report number after report number. Same incident, same people, same modern day Haman, whether it be a male or a female, who is your enemy, right? Same modern day Haman, who wants to cause you pain, give you grief, except for this time, in this generation, where do we go? We go to the police. And it's very discouraging when the police department does not follow up and the police department does not make an arrest even when they see the crime being committed on some video. Very discouraging. Any of you have Haymans in your lives in Portland? Any of you have Haymans in your lives in the world? Or maybe in the church? Some of you may be Israelites, Jews, who know exactly what I'm talking about. You've read the story several times. People who are still against the Jews. Remember Adolf Hitler was a German who was against the Jews. Six million lost their lives. Any different than the Ku Klux Klan against the African American? And now I hear that the Haitian community has taken captive 17 people, 17 missionaries, and for what purpose or reason? To collect $17 million from the U.S. government? It makes me wonder, what did the U.S. government do to the Haitian people, or what have they been doing to the Haitian people that would make them go against the church and take 17 people captive? Are there Haitians captive somewhere in the United States? I read that there are some in Texas, Thousands migrating through South America, coming to this country. For what purpose or reason? I don't know, maybe for a, a better life to a land of milk and honey? Not sure. But the point being that, why do we have Hamans in our lives? What do the Hamans do? Are the Haymans like the stalkers that we have in this country? What is a stalker? What is a stalker? I recently received, I recently received a couple of envelopes, letters from IRS. And uh, I've been receiving these all year long when President Biden had become president, I had asked the IRS to send me the third stimulus check. They sent me the third stimulus check in the form of a card, and on it was 